Hello and a very warm welcome to New Age Parenting, a new series which we have created for today's parents. And it's not just for parents, it's for new age kids and it's for teachers, grandparents, everyone. Parenting is the first connect of a human being with the divine. That's where we experience divinity. And that is why it is the purest relationship. But then in today's time, we are feeling there is a disconnect. Yes, we've all heard about generation gap, but why this disconnect? Because this is not a gap. There is like, you know, we are from different planets actually. Most of the parents feel that they can't even understand what their child wants. Yes, in our times, we had a generation gap, but today's child is much more aware, much more profound and much more cool. Parents are at loss how to go about it. So through this series, we are going to connect with parents, with children, with everyone who is in this uh, relationship and we'll try to explore why there are conflicts and are there solutions because we realize that if there are problems, there have to be answers and this beautiful relationship should be nurtured and continued. And for that, we need to understand the truth about this relationship. That who chooses my parent? Who chooses my child? How is it that I come to this parents only? And how is that that this child comes to comes in my life only? So there is a spiritual significance throughout this series. We will talk about it. In the beginning, in the first episode, in the curtain raiser, let's try to understand what is the significance of this time. Time is cyclic and everything gets repeated. Everything in nature is in a cycle, a cycle of day and night, season cycle. Fashion and lifestyle trends are also cyclic. Movements in the universe are cyclic. Hence, the cycle of world drama. In this cycle, we have reached a stage where big shift is awaited. The new age, paradise, golden era is around the corner. Every religion of the world has promised that what was before will come back again. It's the role of God, Allah, Almighty, the supreme power, to create the new world. But how will God create the new world? With a magical wand? He, the supreme, gave us the humans the power to co-create and made us his tools for creation. Now is the time when creation is taking place. These new age children are his workers who are co-creating in sync with him. There is a need to understand this new breed of children who are demanding, sure of themselves, profound, wise and are in a hurry. These are the awakened, aware souls who have come back at this stage of world drama to fasten the pace of creation. Hence, most parents feel a divine feel 
when they connect with their little ones. If we as parents can understand their role, it will be easier for us to allow them to be and help them create the new world. We may not agree to this theory or we may agree openly, but subconsciously we can all feel that this might be true because we can see the way times are changing and we can see the old life, the old age, the old world crumbling. But on the other hand, we can also feel the newness, the new things being created. And these kids, yes, definitely, if we start looking in that perspective in that way, they are showing us the way. We can feel that goodness, that complete purity through them. We can feel it. So let's try to take this as a new belief system and then move on. Once we have the knowledge, we are empowered to actually work on our relationship. From here on, we move. First, we talk about the spiritual significance of being a parent. But then we move on to the soul searching segment. Yes, this is the most important segment where we talk to various parents and we talk to children, we talk to grandparents also and try to look at the various aspects where the conflict happens. What are the reasons, what are the viewpoints of the parents and what are the viewpoints of the children about these subjects. So in our soul searching segment, let's go and meet different kind of parents and different kind of children. In these times, bringing up a child is not a child's play. If it's tough to give birth to a child, it's even tougher to bring them up. Saisha, my two-month-old child, is the angel of my life. Her presence has made my life more beautiful but at the same time tiring as well i practically don't remember the last time i had a good night's sleep with a crying baby the constant colic diaper changing loss of me time and the list goes on on the other hand i just love her i just love when she stares at me looks at me smiles at me i just look forward to spend my life with her i am overwhelmed to have her in my life This is just the beginning. Once they start growing up, peer pressure is not just experienced by children. It's parents as well who feel the pressure. Peer pressure today is like not only for children as normally people talk about. It is uh, a lot to do with parents also because today uh, children are going to school, they are finding out so many things. They are going, uh, asking their friends where they are going for holidays and which is something Half of the times the children are coming back home to tell us that uh, can we also go to London and so and so and Switzerland and my friend is going. So that sort of a peer pressure comes onto parents from children. Plus, you know, when you go out for um, these uh, parties and with your friends and with your relatives, there's a lot of peer pressure from them too, you know, regarding things like, oh, my son got this trophy and he won this game and, oh, my son has got a 95.4%. Now, these are other things which suddenly click in your mind and you feel like, where do I stand? Where is my son going or my daughter, whatever. So, this sort of a peer pressure for that moment, you have to counsel yourself later, but for that moment, you are really in a fix like, my God, I, even I, my son needs to achieve and then we start treating our children like trophies. So this is what I feel like really is uh, making a lot of uh, confusion in our lives, in our children's lives. And I think we need to rectify that because it's really not good, really not good for our children and for us too. They cannot live without each other and they cannot live with each other. This is a statement given by most parents of growing up children. Is it that this rivalry remain only till childhood? Or seeds of lifelong jealousy and rivalry get sown during this time? Sibling rivalry is very common and when there are two children in the house, in the family, I think the, every child has to pass through it. And I have gone majorly with it with my kids. 
because my daughter is four years elder to my son and I planned it that way so that it would be help it would be <clears throat> like my daughter would be a little independent and would be able to take care of herself when the second child is born but she could not take our love being shared with the second child and though she used to love the child herself but she could not bear our love being shared by the second child and she did not take it very nicely and rather she would behave aggressively at that time i was not mature enough myself to and i did not handle it very sensitively and uh, i used to be very strict and stern with her and it uh, strained our relationship though now when i think of the past i feel i get filled with uh, guilt and compassion i have an elder sister she is 2 years elder than me she fights a lot and she is very rude we fight on things like ac remote and tv remote she te- she pulls my hair and i also pull her hair she tells mummy but mummy scolds her and she- and i win but whatever i still love my sister have you ever felt threatened imagine your child feeling threatened all day in school and college bullying is not a hype created by overprotective parents but a stark reality which if not tackled at the right time leads to lifelong hurts and problems i want to talk about uh, social bullying particularly bullying which happens on social networking sites you all know what i mean and i can uh, say that there are specific circumstances which have happened and they have been very very unfortunate there is a case with my uh, friend's son who is no longer there he uh, faced uh, bullying on the social networking sites it was sparked off by a very very tiny incident but it happened uh, that the peer pressure and the bullying came from his own section or his own class now things were provoked to such an instance that uh, he could no longer take it and he died which was very very unfortunate now the simple thing of him having to confide in his teachers or his parents you know would have stopped this crime i would say crime from being happening i never experienced bullying before but one of my friends has uh, she by mistake stepped on a, a senior's foot and said sorry but uh, the senior was not convinced when the school ended the senior pushed her down the stairs and she had to get stitches so uh, it's not it's a very big deal and i think seniors should remember that they were juniors first and they should treat them as well are parents really aware of what's happening in their child's life or is there a major disconnect are the channels of communication open or is there always a formality this is something we all need to know because unless or until we know the reality we will not be able to change it like every other thing there are different perspectives to why there is a communication gap that begins between a parent and a child usually around the mid teens on a personal level for me it was the fear factor my parents were scared for my safety for my security they somewhere in the process uh, lost track of the equilibrium uh, of the level of protectiveness they should have where to restrain and where to give it where to let go rather as for me i i must add that i was somebody who was very independent very risk taking adventurous tomboyish fearless so it was evident from their perspective to be more protective than what parents generally would be with children of that age group as a result of which because there was a sort of suffocation that began with me in me and also around me for that matter i became more rebellious more experimenting 
uh, I wanted to take experiences, make mistakes, fall and then get up. And this in my life was a major cause of the lack of wavelength, the reason for friction that began between my parents and I. In today's world, I believe that career conflict does exist. In my own family, my sister wanted to join engineering but her mother forced her to go for medical line. She was really good in physics but uh, currently she's been failing in bio. I would request parents to be more sensitive and open towards the children to choose their career because at the end of the day, the students have to live with their own careers rather than parents. You know, when we are talking about our children, when we are talking about a different way of parenting, we don't even know how the time flies. But time for a short break. We'll be back soon.